through Tuesday morning. Today is a rough gossip, a rough reading by Matthew. You listen to what he says. Jesus began to reproach the towns where most of his mighty deeds had been done since they had not repented. Woe to Chorazion. Woe to Bethsaida. For if the mighty deeds done in your midst had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have long ago repented in sackcloth and ashes. But I tell you, it would be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon in the day of judgment than for you. As for, and as for you, Capernaum, will you be exalted to heaven? You'll be thrown down to the netherworld. For if the mighty deeds done in your midst had been done in Sodom, it would have remained. It would have remained until this day. But I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom, the day of judgment, than for you. I take that as a very, very, very uh, strong warning. Be careful when you betray your foundations. Be careful. The mighty works. What are the mighty? Christ was doing miracles, of course, but the mighty work was his preaching. And when you think of the early church in Matthew, be careful about uh, rejecting Christ among us, the church. Be careful, because you'll get what you pay for. See, the one who hears the word of God and keeps it will have a foundation. The one who doesn't, though it was offered and was present, will pay a price for it. And I think that is absolutely true. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not a cultural historian or a cultural philosopher, but I am a reflective man, and I think of our own foundations as a Western culture. You cannot understand our civilization apart from the three great influences that shaped us. I call it the Mediterranean experience, which is exactly what it is. Out of the Middle East, North Africa, and Southern Europe. Okay, what do you get the big three? Greek philosophy gives you science, a scientific mind. Rome gave you law, universal law, okay? The constitutions, the law. Christianity gave you humanism, the foundations of radical humanism, what it is to be truly human. See, a child of God in a very, very uh, powerful sense and an ethic to back it up, self-sacrifice, self-sacrificial love. Those powerful elements fused together. It took, it took centuries, of course, but it fused together to give us Western civilization. And since the 17th century, we began to betray it. Not in the sciences, not in law, but in the foundational element of our morality that undergird, undergirds our civil life. We began to abandon Christianity. We started roughly earlier than that, even in the Renaissance, but especially in the 17th century when they tried to rid the world of superstition in the name of science, that was the Newtonian age, that all good, all truth was Newtonian truth, scientific physics, okay, mathematical physics is the only true truth, okay? okay. It, was the, it was an ideology. Science became ideological, quasi-religious in terms of its commitments. And religion was a matter of the heart and therefore basically, basically whimsical, private, but not universal and not rational. Hence, it got peripheralized. Pious, but not a wisdom. Newtonianism was the only wisdom. Now, in the good news of that, it gave rise to constitutional government and it began to weaken monarchies, the, the absolute rule of monarchies. We wouldn't be here today in the Americas without it. I'm grateful. I am eternally grateful for guys like John Locke, okay? And, uh, Thomas Hobbes even he tells you the truth, even though he's a pagan. I don't care. That's where your constitutional limited government came from. I'm grateful for the Enlightenment, I have to say, and the importance of science, etc., and constitutional government, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But not its abandonment of the of the wisdom of the of the Christian gospel, not its peripheralization, and what has happened, and it has weakened in a sense, the other elements of our society, our moral foundations. I, I, I fear for, in that regard for our culture. The fruit of the, of the scientific, well, the, the fruit of the secularization of society was the rise of messianism in the 20th century. And who were the messiahs? Hitler, Mussolini, who was a jerk. He was a jerk, but, but Hitler was no jerk. Stalin. You could throw in Mao, you got nothing else to do with your time. He was, univer, univer, he was Western educated. These are monsters. 
messianic monsters. They, got, they led to 80 million people being killed, most of whom women and children. They were all Christian, and not Mao. Stalin was in the seminary, Russian Orthodox. Mussolini was a Roman Catholic, and so was Adolf Hitler, the Austrian Catholic. Are you kidding me? Probably was an altar boy. That freaking little monster, huh? They assumed messianic roles, and look what they brought about. They abandoned Christianity in the name of, of messianism of power. Hmm? Yeah. And they destroyed, in a sense, they destroyed the very constitutional governments of which they were a product. They became dictators. Remember something, Hitler got elected. He was elected. He was chancellor or whatever the hell he was. Do you think about that? I think of Hitler all the time because it's, see, an enlightened people, there was no one more enlightened than the German people. And yet they produced the worst monster in their 20th century, maybe in history. And they supported him. Uh, absolute monster. It shows it's capable of anybody. If it could happen there, it could happen anywhere. I remember when I was in Germany, I said, what a gorgeous place, what a beautiful place and a beautiful people. If I had to pick a place to live in Europe, I'd pick Germany hand down, without even blinking an eye, I want to live in Germany, in the Frankfurt area, southern Germany. Yeah, that's where I would pick Hands down, even bling. I said, wait a minute, you have family in Italy. I, I'd go visit. I don't want to live in Italy. I want to live in Germany. I love Germany. I love the people, my friends there. And that is the truth. And that's the stark warning. I remember being in Germany, my friends, I think, God almighty, if a Hitler could rise here, he can rise anywhere. If once there's a betrayal of the foundation, even if it's in a, uh, yes, leave it at that. Watch out, pass off, uh, as you say in German. As man sagt auf Deutsch, pass off, be careful. Because you're going to reap, you are sowing the wind, the world. You were, you're sowing the wind, you will reap the whirlwind. And it's exactly what happened. And it can happen again and again and again. That's the truth. That is the truth. You know, it's inner betrayal that leads to catastrophic consequences. Inner, no one's ever conquered from the outside without having f failed from within. And it's usually moral failure that leads to, leads to the cataclysms. The moral cataclysms, uh, cataclysms that bring down cultures and nations and people. Whatever else is true, Judeo uh, uh, Western civilization has its roots in Judeo-Christianity. Judaism and Christianity. You abandon that. You abandon the soul of the culture and the nations. Europe abandoned it and paid upon a hell of a price for it, the 20th century. And with lead, it goes all the way back to the 17th. As much as it is the foundational uh, culture for constitutional government, and God, wonderful, marvelous government, okay? It led to dictatorships and horror. Hmm? because it betrayed itself. We have to worry about that in this country. We are fully capable of it, of selling out our very foundations. If it could happen in Europe, especially in Germany, the most enlightened people in the world in history, it can happen anywhere. And that's the truth. Boss off. Be careful.